Well, hi, Shoreline. This is your devotional for Thursday, June 18th. And we're now moving into the Psalms of Ascent. Right when you finish this longest chapter of the Bible, Psalm 119, then when you get to Psalm 120, it's called the Psalms of Ascent. And they're called these Psalms of Ascent because these are the songs that the pilgrims, that God's people would sing as they went up to Jerusalem on their pilgrimage. And so ascending the Mount of Zion, ascending the hill of the Lord. And so they called them the Psalms of Ascent. And, and actually, for the, in the ancient mind, wherever you were in the world, going to Jerusalem was up because it was the holy city. Even if you were coming from a place that was physically higher, you were still going up to Jerusalem because it was Jerusalem. And so Psalm 121 is, is one of those Psalms of Ascent. And I listen to these words and just, just get a sense of God speaking this picture of how we worship Him and how we turn our eyes to Him. Psalm 121, beginning in verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel, his people, will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is a shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. And this, this psalm is so beautiful. It's so powerful. And it begins with, with a contrast. If you don't read this right, you're going to get some bad theology. Because when it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains... Don't think that God is saying, hey, you should turn your eyes to the mountains and sort of worship the mountains. Or in the ancient world, a lot of the pagan shrines were in the hills and in the mountains. People would go there, pagans would go there and worship false gods. It's not talking about that. It's drawing a contrast. We can look at the hills and the mountains, but we do not worship them. So listen to what it says. I lift my eyes to the mountains, and then the question, where does my help come from? Is it from the mountains? No, it's from the God of heaven. So then, then the psalmist says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We don't worship heaven and earth. We worship the one who made heaven and earth. Keep that straight. Enjoy nature, but don't become a pantheist where you, where you sort of worship all things. You worship the creation, but be, be a, a theist, a monotheist who worships the one God of heaven and earth who made everything that we enjoy. And then, and then the psalm goes on in verse three and it says, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel, his people, will neither slumber nor sleep. God is watching over you. He wants to give you a sure footing. He doesn't doze off. He doesn't fall asleep on the job. There's a never a moment that God's not watching over you. Now, this doesn't mean you'll never struggle. It doesn't mean no bad things will happen and touch your life. What it does mean is God is present. He is sovereign. He is awake and he is aware. And there's no surprises for God. He's still on the throne in our great moments, in our neutral moments, and in the hardest moments of life, he's still on the throne. And then just one more thought from verse three, I'm sorry, from verse five. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Day or night, his hand is on you. Wherever you go, his hand is on you. If you're a follower of Jesus, in your great moments of victory, in your moments of struggle, his hand is on you. May you know that the Lord watches over you. He is sovereign. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't sleep. He's watching over you. Jesus, help us to understand the truth of that. Let us feel your presence. Remind us that in our worst moments, while we were still sinners, when we were rebels against you, God, you died for us. You gave your life for us, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us understand that and embrace that and celebrate that. And let us live every moment of our life confident, O oh God, that you are with us. Jesus, we pray this in your name and for your glory. Amen. Well, hey, I want to encourage you, if you're planning to come online, online worship on Sunday, 8.30, 10, 11.30, join us. And we're going to continue to walk through this series called The Book and understanding what God's Word has to say to us and how this book calls us out into the world. And if you want to come to services here at the church, Please go online, get registered, read the protocols. We're adjusting every week to follow the, the appropriate protocols. So read through those and come ready to worship the Lord. We will see you Sunday morning in the front row on campus or online. God bless you. Enjoy your day.